work hook. And uh, thanks to the University of Canterbury to, uh, for inviting us along today. Um, we're from uh, Robert Bird Group. Um, we're going to give you a bit of a rundown about uh, who we are as a company, um, why, why we think we're a good fit for graduates. Um, we've actually got a couple of our, couple of our recent uh, graduates on the presentation as well. So they're going to tell you a bit about what they do at Robert Bird Group. And then we're going to make sure that we leave plenty of time at the end for, for you guys to ask us questions. So happy to answer any questions you've got. Um, there's quite a lot of information in this presentation. I'm going to whiz through quite a bit of it. Um, I know that this is being recorded, so you'll be able to look back uh, on the presentation and should you want to, to go and look again at some information. So first of all, let's kick off uh, a little bit about uh, who we are presenting today. So myself, I'm Simon Randall. I'm the operations manager for, for the uh, RBG, Robert Berg Group, New Zealand. Um, I'm a structural engineer. I've been working in the, in the industry for about 15 years from, uh, from the UK, as you might be able to tell. And I studied in Manchester and I've been in New Zealand for about seven years. Um, when I'm not working, I'm riding my bike, playing a guitar or, or trying badly to surf and looking after a couple of kids. So that's myself. Um, I'll let, hand over to Melody, who's going to introduce herself. Yeah, sorry, thanks, Simon. Sorry, hi, everyone. My name is Melody Hong, and I was born and raised in China. So I was um, an international student while I was studying at USA. And I just graduated from University of Canterbury at the end of last year, and then became a graduate structural engineer here at RBG. I, so I basically moved up um, from Christchurch, uh, the city that I lived for like, for the past five years. Um, but so yeah, I absolutely fancy Wellington is a great place to live in, a great place to work and for RBG group. Um, so um, the, the time I'm not working, I would just basically play my video games indoor, or outdoor um, board during or snowboarding uh, in the winter. And that's all about me. Right, thanks, Melody. Uh, and Leo, Leo's uh, uh, one of our engineers up in Auckland. He's going to tell you a bit about himself. Yeah, I'm Leo. Nice to meet you all. Um, so I finished uh, studying at Auckland Uni um, last year, and I was born and raised in Auckland, so I haven't come too far. Um, but I started with RBG as a graduate in February, but I also had a summer internship with them over the summer of 2020 and 2021. Uh, so it was real good just to. Uh, get some experience, get a taste of what it's like working here and those sorts of things. Um, during my time at work, I like working on large scale and complicated design projects. And there's a lot of that here. So that's been, a, that's been real good for me so far. And outside of work, I like mountain biking, surfing and going to festivals. Awesome. Thanks, Leo. Okay. Um, so what I'll do next is just tell you... Um, well, from, from our point of view, we're, we're really keen to understand what graduates want from a career in engineering. Um, this is really important for us to be able to fit a career for, for our graduates and make sure that we're offering what we believe people want from a career. So the way we found that out is went and talked to our recent graduates and say, what is it that you want? We've got a bit of a list here that I think Leo's going to go through and just, uh, and just tell you what we, what we think a career in engineering um, should be. Sweet. Thanks, Simon. Um, so this is sort of based off like my personal experience and also what my friends and colleagues like and that sort of thing. Um, so if we just put the, pull the list up, I'll run you guys through what we've got. Um, so everyone wants to work on like a variety of interesting projects, have a variety of work and that sort of thing. So we've got that as one of the top ones. Um, people want to be able to have their skills advance and move, like move through their career and also like have the opportunity to work on things that improve your knowledge and stuff that you're interested in, interested in as well you want to make a difference to society and help improve the environment and that sort of thing that's a really big one especially for our generation um, working with a good team of people makes the time at work that you have quite enjoyable um, and helps improve your career as well um, a lot of people want to be at the cutting edge of the profession helping to develop new technology and work on the leading leading edge of the profession and that sort of thing and you want to be able to have a voice within an organization so you can have your say, have your opinions heard, all of those sorts of things. Uh, to have your skills and input recognized, so you put in all this time and effort into work and then you actually get rewarded for it and recognized and that sort of thing. Um, having the opportunity to travel and work abroad is a big thing, especially since we've all been in uh, lockdown for a while. Lots of people are keen to go overseas or at least move cities and that sort of thing. Flexible work's been quite... Um, 
coming up is quite a popular thing as well to help improve the work-life balance and that sort of thing. And of course, enjoy a social work environment as well is a really big one. And lastly, working for a company that embraces and encourages diversity. Great, thanks Leo. So what we wanna do basically, we think that IBG can offer all of these things to, to you as a, as a graduate, um, if you start in your career. So next we're gonna tell you a bit about what we do uh, and show you how we, we think we can tick all those boxes for you. So a little bit about RBG, I'm gonna whiz through this. Um, RBG um, are, have been around since 1982. We're just celebrating our um, 40th anniversary. We've only been in New Zealand since 2016. So we're relatively, relatively new in the New Zealand market. We have about 28, about 30, I think now, um, people uh, in, in New Zealand, between, split between Auckland and Wellington. And we, we are, um, we are specialist engineers and we do structural and civil engineering as well as construction engineering and virtual design and construction, which I'll explain a bit about later. And we're also members of the Sabana Jurong group. So this is what we do. We do structural, civil, construction, geotechnical engineering we do in, in UK only, but our offices are, are spread around the world. As you can see here, our biggest offices being Brisbane and London. Um, but then, as I said, the, the Wellington offices are probably the most recent offices in the whole organization. Uh, globally, um, between 600 and 700 employees in total. Um, sustainability is a, is a really big part of our, of our business. And it, this is something which has come to the fore even more so in, in the recent years. So uh, everyone, everyone wants to um, focus on sustainability at the moment. A lot of clients are keen to make sure their designs uh, are as sustainable as possible. At RBG, we took the decision recently to, to put our money where our mouth is really and make a real commitment to, to um, improving, improving sustainability through our designs. So we've signed, it up, signed up to be a 1.5 degree company through the Science-Based Targets Initiative. And that, that basically signs us up to commitment um, to, to both uh, become a net zero company ourselves over the next few years. And also that's the easy bit as far as, 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 as carbon reductions concerned but the next big thing is to committing to ensuring our designs deliver the most sustainable uh, outcomes in in the future and that's our big challenge and we're, we're, we're on the start of this process now and working towards um, making that reality in new zealand that's our team just to put some uh, faces to the, to the names uh, we're split about half and half between wellington and auckland at the moment uh, and we've actually just got a, a recently got a, a single person down in Christchurch who is working on one of our big projects down there, which I'll, I'll mention on. Uh, in terms of discipline split, we are predominantly structural engineers, um, but we have a team of civil engineers as well that we're looking to, to grow. And there's plenty of work in that space. And we have our digital um, drafting technicians as well, which support the whole team. Around the world, um, RBG are generally known for their input into big, complex uh, engineering projects. So here's a selection of some of the, the kind of the wow projects that we've been working on around the world recently. Um, we pride ourselves of being uh, an excellent uh, a company which focuses on engineering excellence and can deliver some real value to these big, complex uh, projects. And I'm just going to flick through a few slides of some of the projects we're currently working on in, in New Zealand. So this is a really interesting project we're doing for uh, Kanga Ora, um, developing um, their next generation of, of very uh, energy efficient housing. So we're building these, uh, these houses up in Auckland with a, a range of different construction materials. Uh, and importantly, they're all designed to passive house standards, uh, which is the, I think that the highest form of energy efficiency housing standard you, you can achieve at the moment. So it's a big step change for Kangaroo to deliver some really sustainable housing. Uh, a very big scale project we've worked on in, in New Zealand over, the, over recent years. This is Waikaria Prison. So this is a $750 million project, a uh, very large prison building up in the Waikato. This was delivered, we did all the structural and civil engineering on this project, and we split the work between our New Zealand offices and our offices in Australia. It was a very, very large project, it's nearing completion at the moment, hopefully be open next year. So we've been working on this for, I think, around four years now. 
Uh, this is a, a, a new hangar buildings that we're involved with for um, for um, for Defence Force, working for Hawkins. Uh, this is um, this is a very interesting project where we're involved doing construction engineering, um, but also doing um, some BIM modelling and management, and also uh, designing seismic restraints for, for all the building services. The the roof is designed um, to be constructed on the floor, and then the, it's lifted up on on these columns, as you can see on these diagrams down the bottom. And we're involved in making sure that the the construction sequencing of that has been fully considered um, when in the roof design and making sure all the additional forces and parts on the roof have been designed for. Interestingly, this roof is being lifted off the ground today as we speak. <laughs> so what Tom Watson, who's our lead uh, uh, construction engineer, is down there on site today with everything crossed, uh, watching this lit, this roof being very slowly lifted um, of the columns and hoping nothing gets stuck. So far, so good. Is the is the good news there? It's a really exciting project to be working on. This is a, a little project down in Christchurch that you might have heard about. It's the um, the Christchurch multi-use arena. Uh, we've we've been um, doing a couple of roles on this project. Uh, firstly, working for Christchurch Council as the independent reviewer, so providing checking of of the of the design, um, and also we've been em employed by the contractor to help them with the temporary. Uh, the construction methodology, but also the temporary works design. So construction engineering is something that not a lot of people do. I think uh, we think RBG is quite unique in offering this service as well as our permanent works design because we can do both. And a lot of the work in construction engineering is making sure that the sequencing of how you uh, what you're constructing works with the permanent works design and also checking, in this case, the roof at each stage of the construction to make sure that as it's constructed and as it's propped and supported in different ways, that all the forces in the roof have been considered. So uh, design is very much more, uh, these, well, especially these complex projects, is a lot more than just designing it in its final condition. The whole sequencing of how it's constructed is, is absolutely key to any to success of any big project like this. So we think we're quite unique in that respect to be able to offer that kind of surface. Um, this is a residential project up in Auckland that we're working on at the moment. Large, large scale, um, medium density residential project, working with Warren Amani, who are one of the leading architects in New Zealand. Again, doing this, this case, we're doing full um, structural engineering design of, of, of the permanent works. This is an interesting project again in Auckland. It's, um, it's a hotel where we're doing all the, the structural engineering, but this is a, a volumetric modular construction which is something quite unique um, and relatively untested in, in New Zealand, where the, the hotel is constructed in, in modules which are based on a shipping container size. They're constructed mainly in, in Asia, in factories over there. This might actually be fabricated in, in Europe. And then they're shipped over on a container and then brought to site and craned in position to like a big kind of Lego set, really. This is uh, quite a unique form of construction, which is not really done much in New Zealand, but RBG has a lot of experience doing this around the world in Australia and Europe. So we've been able to apply our experience on this project. And I think it will be the, definitely the biggest modular, uh, volumetric modular construction project in, in New Zealand. A, another project up in Auckland where we're using modular construction to do a, a mixed use uh, retail and residential project. Again, with Moran Marnie Architect. Uh, at the opposite end of the scale, we do a lot of um, small scale projects as well. So this is a, a residential project in Hawke's Bay, uh, where it's a, an architecturally led um, two story building. So we really do get to work on a, a big range of scales of projects. Uh, another residential project in Wellington that we've been working on, on a very, very steep slope site in Wellington. So we are helping the architect design the, the, the buildings, but also figure out how it's going to be constructed and do some very detailed construction stage um, design to make sure it can actually be constructed. So we don't we don't like to leave that to the contractor or the builder to work out. We need to make sure that these things can be built while we're designing them. It's a very important thing to do. Um, so there's a real range of size of projects there. So right from the small to some of the big ones, 
And because we're part of RBG uh, Global Business and also Sabana Durang, we get lots of great opportunities in New Zealand to work on some really, really big projects as well. So we've been helping our, a, our Brisbane team working on the Cross River Rail project, which is a large underground railway project in, in Brisbane. So we've been helping design some of the, some of the stations, um, uh, underground station boxes for, for them. We worked on a huge um, residential project in Dhaka in Bangladesh, uh, helping uh, Sabana Jong design these huge towers. Um, we were brought on board because of our seismic expertise, which they needed to, to lean on. Kai Tak Stadium in Hong Kong. We have a small office in Hong Kong, so we're helping them out with this huge project as well. And also Hong Kong Airport, where we uh, involved from the construction engineering point of view to help them design the, the construction of these large roof sections. So in New Zealand, we really get a great range of projects and some really good opportunities through our connections to work on some, some of the really interesting projects around the world. Um, we have a big emphasis on digital design in RBG. And we, so for us, digital design is the use of, use of coding, scripting, um, in conjunction with, with modeling software to, to do automation of design, um, parametric design. Um, and this, we really see this is really integral to how we do things and it is the future as we see it of engineering. So these, these skills in, in scripting and coding um, are going to become really, really important in the engineering industry moving forward. So I'd really encourage you guys, if you, if you do have an interest in those areas, to study at university, get as much knowledge as you can. If you are someone who's really um, interested in these areas and has those skills, we really want to hear from you because these are skills that are really important for us uh, and going to be even more important in the, in the future. So RBG set up a, a internal uh, training uh, exercise called our coding club, where around the world, all offices have, uh, have run sessions teaching everybody about coding and how it can be used in, in engineering design. Um, we used it extensively on, on the Wike Area Prison Project where we, we set up um, some automated design processes to design the foundations for us because there was 35 buildings we're trying to design foundations for at the same time. We couldn't do it the old fashioned way. It's just too slow. So we had to think, had to think of some um, new ways to do it. So there's a quick video here, which kind of, I shall let it run. Basically the scripting here, which you see is done in, in grass and uh, dynamo, sorry, which is a, which is a, um, which is a visual programming um, language. And the scripts that we developed allowed information from BIM models in Revit to be automatically pulled through uh, into our calculation packages and then out the other end produce calculation sheets uh, from excel and other software so you've literally got a, a start to finish engineering process which you can let run at a click of a button so what all you're seeing here is, is an automated process the script is doing all of this and this meant we could design the foundations for a, for a whole building in about half an hour which if you're doing it by hand would take you days and this allowed us to, to, to let the, do the foundation design for all these many, many buildings very, very efficiently. So interesting stuff and definitely the future of engineering as we see it. Virtual design and construction, I briefly mentioned, this is something that RBG does. Um, again, we think this is pretty unique. So we help um, contractors and clients do very detailed visualizations of how these very complex projects are going to be constructed. So here's a few examples of projects around the world that we've worked on. I think that's the um, stadium at the top left there in, in, um, in Melbourne, I believe. And then down bottom right is the Abu Dhabi airport. These are all, these are all graphical images that we've produced. These are not photographs. Uh, and we can, we do um, 4D modeling. I think if you don't know what 4D is, it's basically taking a 3D model and adding in the, the further dimension of time. So all these, all these buildings are sequenced and then we can create uh, videos, uh, diagrams showing how these things are constructed stage by stage. And all the thinking that goes into that in terms of making the sequence work, we can, 
we can build in a model ahead of them getting to site. So you can find the problems, you can iron out the correct sequence all in the model space before you get to site. Um, we did this on the Ohakia hangar project, which, um, which I briefly mentioned earlier. We, we've got a very nice video about <laughs> how the, the roof lift was going to work. Unfortunately, we can't show it to you because it's, it's rather sensitive information being working for Defence Force. But um, it's something that we do globally and we definitely do in, in New Zealand as well. Right, so that's that's a spiel about what we what we do uh, as a as a business, what, what kind of projects we work on. The next bit we want to talk about is is how uh, how we like to integrate graduates and interns into into the way we work. So um, we obviously employ graduates and students uh, through internships every year. Um, we. We, it's a very important process for us. Uh, we think we offer some really good opportunities for through on the, job, on the job mentoring and coaching and working with some really uh, key people, some very uh, technically astute people, which you can learn from. Internships. I think uh, Leo is going to talk about this a little bit, but it's as I mentioned, it's a re internships are really, really important for RBG. Um, we really like to bring in the very best people for our internships because it allows us to and to, to get the great skills that are coming through university and, and see how we can integrate them into our business. But Leo, I'll hand over to you, mate. Great. Thanks, Simon. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to have an internship with RBG um, after my third year of university. Um, so I can vouch for everything that's said here. It was uh, really good to sort of get an idea over a few months of what work is like here. And I was exposed to three of the previously mentioned projects, um, including Wikaria Prison, the Kaying Aura Apartments and the Wakefield Street Hotel. So a nice range of projects there. Um, and that, that, that was really good. And it kind of helped tie my study together and sort of like give meaning to that. It's like, this is what I've been studying for for the past few years. Um, and kind of gave me a sort of taste of what it was like to be a structural consultant. Um, before that, I'd had an internship at Hawkins where I was doing contracting. And so it was good to kind of get a taste of both of those. Um, and I found that the experience on site kind of complemented the work that I did here, just sort of general understanding, like from seeing problems on site and actually seeing stuff get built as well. Uh, so bit of advice, if you do have the opportunity to have um, an internship at both a consultant and a contractor, that's a great way to go. Uh, but no worries if uh, if you can't do that. Um, and during my internship, there was, um, I was sat down with my manager and they talked me through and they were like, what do you want out of this internship? What's like your interests? Uh, what sort of design stuff you want to work on and that sort of thing. And I said, I, I really want to work on some seismic stuff. I really want to work on some wind stuff and some timber stuff. And they actually found um, little bits of projects that I could work on uh, that sort of captured pretty much all of that even over a short uh, few month period uh, so that was really good cool. uh, that was really cool that's kind of this uh, bullet point here is planning and guidance at the start of the internship to help identify my goals and stuff so I definitely felt that and it was was really good to learn those things um, I was I was also exposed to a variety of projects that, as I mentioned I got to work on those three projects and help develop some design tools as well um, and it was kind of using the stuff that I'd learned previously at uni, exposing me to a little bit more design techniques that I hadn't learned yet as well. Um, and that was all putting it towards real projects, which I felt gave the work a lot more meaning in comparison to some of the stuff we do at uni, where it can seem sometimes a little bit pointless, but it's all worth it in the end. Um, and yeah, there was lots of lots of training with an opportunity. And um, while I, while I was an intern and still was a graduate, and it was quite good. There was quite a few graduates in Auckland at the time, so I could kind of look up to them and talk to them about what it's like a couple of years down the line and that sort of thing. And yeah, currently I'm also um, for this summer we're going to be developing a more structured internship program. So it'll be um, so there'll be stuff like a, a research project to work on in your downtime and a few other little bits and pieces that'll be um, coming into play this summer. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was really fun and obviously I enjoyed it because I came back here as a graduate. So yeah, yeah, and I think that that really kind of. Uh, solidifies how important it is for us to, to get interns, interns because if we get, have an intern who comes to us does really well um, 
we know that they're a good fit for the business and then they can start as a graduate it's it's absolutely gold for us so we, we really um, we put a lot of emphasis on to making sure that internships are successful uh, and everyone gets the both the student and both ourselves get get what they need out of that of that time it's really important thanks leo and this this is a bit of a list of the stuff that you did while you were here right yeah, so this is um this is sort of like what my life has been like as a graduate since I started. Um, so there's a little bit of a timeline there. But first, I just want to say, compared to university, I have a lot more free time. My weekends, my own, and also like after work is my own time as well. Um, I think you'll get that pretty much anywhere, any company you go to. But it's quite nice finishing uni and not having to worry about assignments and all those things over the weekends and stuff like that. So you can just go and do whatever you want there. Um, and also the work I'm doing now feels a lot more meaningful than when I was at uni, like I can see the contributions I make to projects and that's all, um, yeah, that's all really satisfying and it's, yeah, exactly what I wanted to, wanted to do. Um, and since I started as a graduate, um, first, first sort of work I did was on one of the projects we mentioned previously. Um, I, I was doing the concrete podium design, so there's like a basement car park, so I was doing the, um, floor slabs and the concrete beams and all the design for that and one of the interns actually started um, the design process for that so I've been carrying that on carrying it over to the develop design phase and that sort of thing and that'll be um, there'll be um, the detailed design will be starting soon so we'll be sort of getting that ready for construction so that there's a little picture of that there which is the concrete podium design um, on the same project, I got to do the roof steelwork design. That was really cool because I got to take it through from a concept phase right through to develop design. So I got to determine where the layout, art, layout is and all of that sort of stuff and kind of start it from scratch with a lot of guidance, obviously, but it was a really good learning process and um, quite satisfying to see the uh, Strand 7 model that, we, that I built here and doing all the analysis through that and taking that through. Um, another little project I worked on was some temporary works for basement retention. Uh, this is for the Wakefield um, Hotel. So that's just um, finding out or well, designing some temporary works to hold up the basement retaining walls while they do the excavation and stuff. So that was quite interesting and it was um, a little bit um, unique. It didn't follow the standard procedures that we tend to do that we tend to learn at uni and we tend to do for more permanent works design. So that was really, that was really cool and um, quite interesting to work on. And now I'm working on a couple of design packages for um, another one of the previously mentioned projects where I'm doing a design of like a steel canopy that's a couple, couple stories tall and determining the steel work layout and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll be working on the entrance building design, which is like a two story um, sort of uh, retail building um, and then some like con a concrete podium and uh, some more canopy structures as well so overall great variety of projects got to work on wind seismic and gravity loading analysis uh, got to work on concrete steel and timber design and have managed to work on projects from both the concept phase all the way through to detailed design um, and we'll be seeing the first one of these on site um, in the next coming months as well. So I've only been here for a few months, but I'm grateful that I've had to have uh, been able to have this like wide variety of experience. And it's been really enjoyable. Um, so yeah, awesome. thank you. Thanks, Leo. And then Melody, you've got a list of the things that you've been working on as well. Oh, yes, yes. Um, very cool projects and great work, Leo. I think you almost covered um, all the projects that engineer can do like for the whole life. Uh, just in that short months, but cool. But um, but I probably will um, describe my life um, as a graduate in RBJ as a process of learning. Like like you come up as a graduate, like you don't have to like know like everything like um, for that project because uh, RBG provide a really good learning opportunities and we have a supervisor like um, working together with you for all the projects. So uh, you're not by yourself uh, on your own. So it's good that you have backup um, for everything. So um, I started at the Christchurch Stadium project, which um, that someone just mentioned previously, um, the Christchurch multiple use arena. So um, my main role was just determine the wind load on the roof cladding. Since like someone mentioned it was uh, in this project involved um, 
a huge amount of uh, construction temporary work. So it was basically 53 stages of construction um, monitoring. So we need, so my main role was to calculate the wind demand uh, for each stages. It was pretty challenging due to um, the massive scale, but it was also a lot of fun and um, pretty cool that um, as a graduate I can be involved in this kind of scale as projects. And after that, um, I worked on a, a really cool, nice looking residential projects in Auckland that's shown in the photo on the bottom left. So my job uh, was to design the timber rafter and the beam um, together with our senior engineer. And then um, I worked on a um, ISA project uh, for building that build, uh, that was built back in 1950, a very old building. Um, so that was a photo of me in the set visit um, for that building. So um, it's okay if you don't know what is ISA mean, is initial assessment assessment, because um, I don't know what is ISA stand for before I, until I got the job. So don't worry. So no pressures, uh, lots of learning after you, actually get into the role because um, what we've been taught in the unit is more like um, new build design and um, like conceptual or detailed design um, piece by piece. But, um, but here in RBG, like you can literally learn lots of stuff that you like you don't get to teach, um, you don't get to be taught uh, in uni, such as ISA here. And then um, after that, I've worked on um, a con con connection design um, for a project I couldn't tell you guys here is top secret. So um, yeah, it was pretty cool. So uh, I built a 3D SketchUp model just next to uh, the picture at the middle of Borden. So um, I think I bit, I think I designed this connection design like last month, but now it's already been built. I think um, this, I guess this feeling of accomplishment um, that you literally watched the stuff that you designed have been built uh, is what we're seeking for as engineer, right? Uh, and then I've worked on, uh, recently I've worked on um, a residential three-story um, building just for the uh, conceptual design stage. Um, my main role was to design the electrical resistor system uh, in this building. Uh, that, that was really cool and it's still going on at the moment. Uh, really looking forward to getting involved in the detailed design stage. And uh, then I've um, now I'm still working on the uh, tower for service for one of our huge projects as well. Uh, couldn't mention the name as well, uh, really unfortunate. But, um, is uh, what Seven just mentioned about is called parametric design. Um, is um, this tower is mainly made by the moment resistor frame, and um, yeah, it was a really nice project and uh, lots of learning. Awesome, thanks guys. I think you guys got some really good experience, and long may it continue. Uh, so this is this is just a quick mention about a young engineers group that we've set up um, the last couple of years here in New Zealand. And I think um, Melody is going to tell us a bit about this. Yeah. Uh, so to I think to make sure that every young engineers in RBG New Zealand are um, continuing developing themselves and have a group can talk and discuss um, where our issues and problems that we're facing at our stage uh, from a young, young engineer point of view. We set up this young engineering board group for other grad and the intermediate engineers. So we basically meet up uh, regularly and discuss uh, based on um, our monthly topics. Uh, the, the general aim is to develop a, ser um, a series of uh, software and technical skills. So I found this um, form is really helpful since that you have a chance to know what is going on at the other office and to get to know the other co-workers. Yeah, so. Brilliant, thanks Melody. Um, social activities, and uh, we like to pride ourselves on quite a social team, both in Auckland and Wellington. So here's just a few pictures of the stuff that we get up to. Um, been sailing in Wellington Harbor, uh, canoeing out, canoeing out in the uh, Haraki Gulf, and, and lots, lots of kind of Christmas parties and work events. 
Um, that middle top picture is a picture of our Wellington office. We've got a foosball table, dartboard, um, and ever increasing, uh, he's in a music corner now as well. <laughs> so ever increasing number of things we can do in, a, in the office to, to, uh, to un relax and unwind for work occasionally, which is really important. So that's a bit about who we are um, and what we do. So uh, this is a list of really why we think RBG is a really good op uh, option for yourselves if you're looking to start your career. We, we do pride ourselves on, on engineering excellence. We think we do offer a unique off, uh, offering in terms of engineering companies, especially in this country, where we, we offer both permanent works and temporary works design. And it's quite integral to our philosophy that we call it design for delivery. So we, we design designs, structures, buildings that both can work in a permanent condition, but also temporary. We also we think about construction a lot more than, uh, than you would find in some, in some, uh, some different approaches. Because we work on some of these leading projects, we've got, we, uh, I think we offer some good exposure to advanced engineering methods, digital design and engineering, as I mentioned. We constantly like to push, push the envelope um, of engineering um, structurally uh, and obviously from the digital point of view as well. We are a small business in, in New Zealand. Um, so that means that we do work on some of these smaller projects, as we've mentioned, as well as these big, exciting, big projects. Uh, we think that's a really good, a really good option for, for a young engineer starting out your career. As, as Melody and Leo have kind of explained, working on a variety of projects is really, really important when you're starting your career because you get exposure to lots of different uh, types of projects, lots of different types of design and timber, steel, concrete. So we believe we can offer that, that variety, which is really important to gaining your, your engineering knowledge. I, I can speak from experience because I know when I started my career for a big firm in the UK, I worked on one project for two years, my first two years as a graduate. I would not recommend it. It doesn't give you the variety that you need to really kind of uh, become a, a, an all round engineer. But as we mentioned, because we're part of a larger business, we do get exposed to these big, big projects. So I, we see it as the best of both worlds. You get working for a small company, both in terms of project exposure and the company uh, ethos. We feel like a small business, but we're also part of this large international group as well, which provides bigger opportunities. Uh, we're a very young team here in, in New Zealand, really. Um, I think... Um, uh, I think I'm one of the oldest here in, in our office in Wellington. <laughs> so that, that kind of puts it in, in scale, really. Uh, and, that, and that does give a different feel for the business, I think. So we're, we're young and we're forward thinking. Um, we're not, we're not uh, stuck in our ways, put it that way. And we're a fun and social team. So we're like, we do put a lot of emphasis on making sure that everyone, everyone has social activities outside of our working hard environment. We offer flexible working as a lot of places do now, but that's obviously become the, the new norm now in terms of working from home and flexible flexible working arrangements. COVID has brought this to the fore, but it's it's now part of, part of what we do. Uh, and we offer a range of benefits as well, both from a KiwiSaver health insurance bonus scheme and also a purchase leave scheme where you can buy additional, additional leave. So in all in all, we think we're a good prospect um, for, for you if you're looking for a company to start your career. Um, very quickly, I'll just run through this. If you are applying for graduate intern positions, here's our kind of a few tips to help you help you be successful. Employers are looking for a person as well. We assume everyone coming out of university has got all the skills and engineering knowledge, but we're really looking for the, the person around that, that brain as well. You need to be working as part of a team, so it's important as us for us to look at how well you're going to fit in into our team. So we're looking for those, uh, looking at those things on the CVs which are uh, outside your work. You know what social activities do you do, what your interests, your hobbies. It's all really important stuff to put on your CVs, and don't so don't forget about those. Uh, practical internships are great, as Leo said. If you've got experience working in design office. Also working for contractors, it's all great. It shows you a rounded, uh, rounded experience. When you turn up for interview, ha think of some questions you wanna ask as well. And you, you should expect to do most of the talking in an interview situation. So if you have a think uh, before you get there, what kind of things would I like to ask? It always looks good if someone's keen to ask questions. Ask 
um, ask to meet some some graduates if you're going for a, an interview. If you're if you're interviews with some senior people, say, oh, do you mind if I have a chat to some of your recent grads? We actually as a standard now for our interviews, we we generally do interview with our senior team, but we then offer the opportunity for the applicant to go out for a coffee or um, and meet some of our recent grads. So we think that's a great way they can get to ask questions a bit more informally and get some honest answers about what it's like working for the business. Um, and if you could bring examples of project work, that's another great thing. You turn up with a bit of a portfolio, you can discuss what you've done at a university or finally a project, things like that. So a few tips there for, uh, for making you stand out when you, when you apply for, for roles. And that's really, that's us really. Um, I hope you've got some time for some questions now, but just in summary, in terms of who we're looking for at the moment. So we are actively looking for applicants for graduates uh, for starting next year and also internships for this summer, both in Wellington and in Auckland. So if you are interested, please do get in touch. There's an email there, send us your CV and a cover letter and your transcript of your results from university. And I think we've just done 40 minutes. Almost, almost on the dot. So really keen to know if you've got any questions, please, please let us know. It's a question that's come through in the chat there. Simon? You're muted. Uh, an office environment. Uh, I'll let Leon, Melody, answer that. What, what do you think the office environment's like at RBG? Yeah, I'm quite enjoying it. Eh? It's I find it's quite a good place to focus, but it's not too it's not too like strict or formal or anything like that. So it's quite relaxed. You can kind of take breaks when you want and sort of like catch up with people. And it's all open plan, which makes it a bit easier when you have questions, which we, um, I'm sure Melody can agree with this. I have a lot of questions as a graduate and everyone's always really keen to take some time out and sort of help and answer those questions and um, those sorts of things. So that's a big one I've noticed is just how helpful everyone is and it's not, super strict or formal or anything like that um so that that's definitely a big um big bonus yeah that uh, that is true and especially uh in the valentine office uh the environment is pretty relaxing and chill uh, we have we, we even have some instruments uh, like guitar and some darts board and the food game here in the office so um yeah yeah we have our little um little tradition of having Friday afternoon beers. So it's normally about, it seems to creep in earlier and earlier, but normally by about three o'clock in the afternoon on, on Friday, if, if everyone's done their timesheets, then uh, there's beers being opened and uh, uh, while people finishing off their, their work. So yeah, we do like to unwind at the end of the week. It's uh, really important. Um, at the end of that question uh, about coding, do you only use Python or do you use others such as Java and C? Um, I, I think any experience in coding is useful. I, I'll, I'll admit, I'm, I'm not a coder myself. I think this is where the change is coming from. Obviously, when I was at university, it's not really being taught. And hopefully, it's getting taught more and more because it is becoming important. So any coding experience is good because then, obviously, if you understand the, the principles behind it, you can learn other, other languages. And that's why we do run kind of training sessions using Python. Um, but yeah, those visual um, programming languages such as Grasshopper and Dynamo also really, really powerful um, to interface between different bits of software that we use. But any experience is good. Any other questions? How many grads do you take on each year? That's a good question. I think um, because we're a relatively small business, we've generally only been taking one or two in, in Wellington and, and Auckland. Um, so that's that's normally what we do as we grow bigger. I'm sure we'd be taking more and more on. But we do we do obviously we, we, we do try and balance it to make sure that we're not taking on too many because we want to be able to offer the right level of support to graduates when they come in. Um, we, it's really important that we, we properly support graduates and they have exposure to people um, who can mentor them and guide them. So we are conscious if we take too many graduates on, that's, it becomes more difficult to be able to do that effectively. And for internships, um, normally about one or two in, in each location as well. 
each year. Think you're on uh, mute there, Aaron. If you're talking, I was on mute. I was saying, <laughs> if there's uh, no more questions coming through, I think we'll wrap it up. But thank you very much for coming and doing this and bringing some graduates. It's really interesting seeing what you guys do. No problem at all. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Cheers. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Okay. Thank so, you very thank much. Thank you.